This video is continuing on about independent events, but specifically, we're just going to do examples in this video. I will do three examples, and then I'm going to leave a fourth example as a challenge problem for you all. Okay, here we go. Example the first. Let A be the event of drawing a king from a standard poker deck and B, the event of drawing a diamond, then A and B are independent since this equation holds. So the way we're gonna show that this equation holds is by calculating the left-hand side first. So A is a king and B is a diamond, so a king and a diamond indicates to us that we are drawing the king of diamonds. There's only one such card in 52 cards, so that probability is 1 out of 52. The right-hand side will need two calculations, but that's okay. Probability of drawing a king. There are four kings in the deck of 52 cards. So indeed, the probability is 4 over 52, or 1 over 13. And the probability that we draw a diamond is 13, as there, uh, 13 over 52, as there are 13 diamonds out of the 52 cards in the deck. So that's 1 fourth. So indeed, this equation then tells us 1 over 52 is equal to 1 over 13 times 1 over 4. So we conclude, yes, A and B are independent, as we just showed. OK, that example wasn't so bad. Let's try a slightly more complicated example. Example two. Myra and Carlos are summer interns working as proofreaders for a local newspaper. Based on previous experience, Myra has an 80% chance of catching an error. So let's just say the probability of Myra catching an error is 0 0.8. We could represent that symbolically as such. While Carlos has a 60% chance of catching the same error. So then we could say Carlos is equal to 0 0.6. Suppose the newspaper, which will go out tomorrow morning, contains an error. What is the probability the error goes undetected by Myra and Carlos? Okay, so what we're essentially looking for, using M and C as our events of interest, is let's start out with, okay, Myra or Carlos could catch an error. But if the error goes undetected, that means neither of them caught it. So that means Myra or Carlos complement is neither of them caught this error. Now that looks a little bit intimidating at first, but using some properties of probability, we can turn this into 1 minus Myra or Carlos catches the error. So now we can deal with this. We've got 1 minus. Now let's pay attention to parentheses here. The probability that Myra catches the error plus the probability that Carlos catches the error minus the probability of Myra and Carlos both catching the error simultaneously. Oh, well, we don't have this one. But you know what? As long as you assume they are reading the newspaper in an effort to catch an error separately, then you can assume Myra and Carlos will catch errors independently. So we could say Myra and Carlos, the probability that Myra and Carlos catch the error is 0 0.8 times 0 0.6. Oh, fantastic. Then we can solve our problem. So we've got 1 minus 0 0.8 plus 0 0.6 minus 0 0.8 times 0 0.6. This isn't a very difficult problem to solve, but to remind you all that R is your friend, we can just do it in R. Oh, 8%. That's nice. 
So there is an 8% chance that the error does not, uh, that the error goes undetected. Well, that's actually pretty nice. There's less than a 10% chance that the newspaper will go out with an error tomorrow morning. That's quite nice. And it was all based on properties of probabilities and independence. Okay, let's try our third example. Example three. A rocket has a built-in redundant system. You sure hope so if you're trying to get to the moon. In this system, if component K1 fails, it is bypassed and component is K and component K2 is used. If K2 fails, it is bypassed and component K3 is used. Oh, you know what? We could actually imagine that in quite a nice little picture. So let's say there's component K1, component K2, and component K3. Now, theoretically, there's some input that this these components are um, being fed from. So if we imagine there's an input and we imagine there's an output of whatever it may be, it might as well just be get to the moon, but we'll just label it output. Then we could imagine such a backup system like this. Starting with the input, we could try component one. If it fails, okay, let's try component two. If component one and two fail, let's try component three. The point is there's three branches coming out of the input such that we could go down any branch to end up at the output. This is a picture of essentially a diagram, if you want to be more formal, of a three component system that acts as redundancies in case any of the one components fail, you can still make it through another path to the output. In fact, this is how Amazon and Google and uh, Facebook all set up their servers. You, as a user, essentially request some, uh, oh, let's think of Netflix, I like this. You, as a user, request some video on Netflix to watch. Say you are in, California, well, then you're probably going to go through their server farm in Oregon to see your output. But let's say Oregon does not have power right now for one reason or another. Well, instead of going through Oregon to receive your video streamed to your machine, maybe it instead goes through Nevada. Well, if the entire West Coast is down, uh, Oregon and Nevada, then maybe to get your output, you go through their Virginia servers. Well, that indeed then functions as like a backup system such that if any one server farm is down, there is an alternate path to get your streaming video when you request it. Oh, that was a little tangent, but I think that was important because this is a crucial diagram in the world of uh, systems and statistics. So back on course. Suppose that the probability of failure of any one component is 0.15. Okay, so let's write that as probability component i fails is equal to 0.15. So let's just circle failure just so we remember. And this holds for i in 1, 2, and 3. The probability that the entire system fails, a. So since ai represents failure of any one component, what we really want is a1 fails and a2 fails and a3 fails. We certainly don't want that, but that's what we're interested in calculating. Since the components are independent, we can just multiply together then the individual probabilities. So that's just 0.15 to the power of 3. And once again, to remind you that r is your friend, 0.0034, let's call it. And there's your answer for part A. Part B, find the probability that the entire system succeeds. Well, look, we've already done half the work. If this is the probability that the entire system fails, then one minus the probability that the entire system fails will be the probability that the entire system succeeds. So what is that, 9966? Oh, and in fact, if you have three component systems, even if there's a somewhat 
significant chance they fail, as long as you have three of them, there's going to be a pretty small chance, a uh, pretty big chance that the entire system succeeds. That's fantastic. So you can see the benefits of including backup systems in uh, backup components in whatever system you might have. So I'll present to you the fourth example, which is to be a challenge problem. And I think my hint is going to be the probability of being male can be calculated as x plus 30 divided by x plus 120. I encourage you to use this calculation in a number of and another number of and another number of calculations like this in order to ensure that the probability that an employee is white is independent of the probability of employee is male. I'll leave that for you as a challenge problem. Good luck.